So my name is Vincent Martin, I'm the convener of, and chairman uh, here this evening and I'm also the head of the Kildare Green Party. It's just, it's very heartening to see this, the, the numbers tonight, because about 15 years ago I organised a very similar type meeting and I put a big ad in the newspaper and five people turned up. That was including me. <laughs> My girlfriend, my wife, that's the same person. <laughs> my mommy, God rest her. And uh, curiosity, just uh, a couple of others I didn't know. It's just phenomenal. I suppose it's, we're getting it on the news every, every night, or nearly every night with George Lee, and we see, luckily, maybe, we're not, we're not getting too carried away with the numbers tonight, they would weather DDs off a little bit. Unlike yesterday, on the day before I saw a few snowmans we built around Nace. And go out and buy your 99 ice creams tomorrow because we're getting the four seasons in the one week. I'm an avid beekeeper and I spotted uh, bees out on Christmas Day and the daffodils were up for the last two months. It's incredible. So, um, climate change is moving faster than we are and we have to catch up but it's never too late. And we need to remember it's never too late. And I'm not here tonight to do political bashing, but try to leave the room tonight with hope. The results of global warming, warming are happening before our very eyes, in our very own country, in our very own towns. The ice sheets and glaciers rapidly melting, the rising sea levels, the increase in storms and extreme weather, the unprecedented temperatures and rampant fires, even in the Gores fires in neighbouring county of Wicklow a few weeks ago. And it's just all, for me, it's a bit frightening. Um, and I personally want to do my, play my small part. I think before the worst of it happens, uh, you know, it's, it's really the young generation, a special shout out to the young people here tonight, and it's for my two young children and their children, I think. But I'm not going to say I stood idly by and let this happen. And I'm going to play my small part. And I figured, as the, young, as the Greens did, no one individual can beat the sum parts. So uh, I think together in unity and harmony and in a non-divisive way is the way forward. Uh, Richard... Um, a friend of mine I met yesterday, Richard, he mentioned the famous quote from David Attenborough, which made the news uh, uh, um, at the conference in Poland, the COP conference, that if we don't take action now, the collapse of civilization and the extinction of much of the natural world is on the horizon. <coughs> um, big words from such a respected guy. And I'm not going to dwell too much in the past, just to let us remind ourselves of the challenge that we're facing. In 11 years, if we don't do much of the heavy lifting, it'll be too late. So if you picture yourself now and where you'll be in 11 years time, and then by 2050, uh, under the Paris Agreement, if we don't keep global warming well below two degrees, uh, it's over for us, and, and we've, we've pursued well below, hopefully, 1.5 degrees. So, I, I just see this climate change imminent car crash, and I, I'm still full of hope, and tonight it's about hope, and we have a fantastic guest speaker, uh, Davy Phillip, who will introduce shortly, and he, he will be full of hope. And you're in for a treat tonight. There'll be lots of uh, audience participation. There's not set speeches tonight. And you all go home and wonder what that was all about. So we're hoping to have an interactive night. I see Liz Cullen here, a, a local doctor who in her spare time has devoted 10 years research to some of the worst evils and consequences of air pollution and climate-related pollution. She, she very kindly is reading a book at the moment and in the foreword of it, and she sent it on to me. It, it's, it reads, I am woken in the middle of the night by the cries of my grandchildren who have yet to be born. 
after a nuclear explosion, there will of course be many regrets, the loss of loved ones, possibly the loss of your sight, your hearing, but the worst regret of all would be to know that you could have stopped it but didn't. Tonight we are not contemplating failure. We may be disillusioned, angry, that we are not seeing the leadership we need, and unfortunately only recently in the Waste Reduction Bill, the government rejected the Green Party's bill to abolish single-use plastic and introduce an incentive scheme to, for the return of cans and bottles, and that, that was just gone. So I'm absolutely convinced that government, central government obviously has to lead. They have to lead from the front, just like they did with the plastic bags in the shops. The smog they got rid of in Dublin. There's so many examples. This smoking ban, at times you do need leadership from central government, but we can't wait on central government. So we're going ahead and we're going to influence and build a people's movement from the ground up. And before we concentrate on the positives, just to remind us where we are tonight. Ireland, I should probably know, is completely off course. Lots of talk, but no action. Ireland's greenhouse gas emissions are embarrassingly and scandalous. We are pumping about 62 million tonnes of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere every year. That works out at 13 tonnes per person, which is far worse than our neighbouring UK, which is 8 tonnes per person. And per capita Ireland is a laggard, it's taken up the list in the EU 28. And we are actually going backwards. Our commitments require emissions to go down by 1 million tonnes per annum, but instead our emissions are going up by 2.1 million per year. We are going to exceed our 2020 emission targets by 16 million tonnes. We are going to, on course, to exceed our 2030 targets by 50 million tonnes. And we will pay dearly for this in fines. Fines and money which should have gone into our hospitals and our schools and our, our, our play parks. And we're going to turn tonight the disillusionment and that sad reality, that anger, into something positive where we can take action, we can take ownership of this. Uh, together, as a community, together we can place climate action on the heart of the political agenda. And across the country, communities are doing this. Tidy towns, groups, residential associate, resident associations, other groups are creating habitats to support or renew our declining insect population. Something as simple as that that makes such a difference. The changes necessary for effective climate action have real long-term benefits. Going green puts money in your pocket. Moving away from car use will not only increase health benefits, but will also make our streets safer and our air cleaner. And tonight, we are launching the Kildare uh, Electric Car Owners Group. Um, for those who are waiting for a car and it's a big wait, or for those who have a car, something simple, non-party political, to lobby. Um, and we're going to take emails tonight, Kevin Mullen and I are here, uh, to get more charging points for the cars, simple things like that. And then can we do joined up thinking, can we have the Voltec solar panels, that they should totally uh, provide the energy for the car, and, and the extra energy should go back in uh, to the grid. But unfortunately, if you want more than eight standard grids on your roof at the moment, you need planning permission. A lot of things have to be tweaked. Uh, a lot of people want to get their uh, charging point in their home for friends of electric cars and say, oh no, you can't, you can't do that, you don't have a car yourself. But they have electric friends. Funny, isn't it? Or uh, another one I heard two weeks ago, a, a certain person bought a car, or two of them bought the same model, and oh, it's not yet approved, it's not officially on the list, yet it's 100% electric. And the zero waste community, Peter Hamilton is a great voice for that, and Annie Byrne in Maynooth, and Peter's here tonight, the Green Party candidate in Maynooth, shares tips with others on how to reduce household waste and personal waste on a budget. Students in green school committees and primary and secondary schools are reducing energy consumption, conserving water, reducing, reusing, recycling, protecting and cherishing biodiversity. And tonight, uh, as I said, especially a shout out for the uh, young 
members of the audience, the future, they get it and they're going to lead us out of this and they're going to be the role models. The, the primary school kids are telling their parents what to do, it's fantastic. And tonight, uh, Jen and Elaine are here and they're going to facilitate and take names after so many requests of establishment at Kildare Young Greens organisation. And you're so welcome to be part of that, the young people. I'm just technically a tiny bit too old myself. <laughs> Ending the, 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 the use, the production of single-use plastic, you've probably seen that documentary recently, three times the size of France in the Pacific, just made of plastic, it's outrageous. Retrofitting houses will make our homes more energy efficient and reduce our heating bills. Simple stuff like this. And going back to Attenborough, he said, we need to move away and beyond uh, guilt and blame and get on with the practical tasks in hand. I'm a big believer in that. Uh, like someone said to me, uh, I was canvassing, uh, would, you, would you vote me? No, I'd love to, but I don't know much about it. Oh. I said, oh, no one, I'm not a scientist. Um, it's, not, it's not a public scrutiny competition. He's more greener than she is, and she's the greenest of them all, and that's a middle green. And no one, you know, you know, maybe you do it in your own way. Maybe your ballot paper is, is a start. No one, the Green Movement is not judgmental, and if it is, it's very divisive if it, if it ever gets to that. And this Friday, we have the student strikes, which have been going on in Maynooth. They've been staged across the country, and um, I'm hoping to obviously support that, but again, the young people are taking the lead. So now is the time to stand up as communities. Well, there's so much at stake, there's so much to gain if we become leaders in climate action. Across the country, communities are already doing this. Tonight, Davy Phillip of Cultivate.ie, and a pioneering voice and a founder of uh, Clock Jordan in County Tipperary, Ireland's greenest village, shares his thoughts on how we can future-proof our communities. Self-help, don't wait on the government any longer. Uh, tell us, he's going to tell us what can be done and what is being done. But most importantly, Davey's going to ask you, here's looking at you, kid. What, 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 are you, what can we do to help the carnage and you know, 200 different figures? The conservative one is 250,000 fatalities every year in the world as a result of climate change and air pollution. It's incredible. Barack Obama said we're losing more fatalities in climate, uh, the shambolic effects of climate change than in terrorism. But, so that's the challenge that is being laid down to us all tonight.